Hey folks, it's the Bad Brad Berkwood, the host of the Bad Brad Berkwood Show, and this is another RSR video email back with your questions. As we always say, forget about it. We don't cherry pick. You send them in, we answer them. But before we start the RSR video email back, let's show you one of these again, folks. You asked for them, we got them. RingsideReport.com, the heart of boxing, t-shirts. And on the back, the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. Yeah, that good looking guy over there with the fedora, that's me. Medium to extra large is what we have, not XXL. Quit putting on my Facebook page, do you have XXL when you always hear me say, we do not. But we do have an in at Jenny Craig if you're an XXXXL. Whether you're from Oklahoma or parts uh, unknown, we can get you to Jenny Craig at a small nominal fee. I'll be your middleman. Forget about it. But hey, once again, Bad Brad Berkwood, T-shirts, show, Heart of Boxing, forget about it, $19.95 plus postage and handling. And with that said, forget about it, let me get my most comfortable chair, zoom in on this, my favorite, favorite director chair, and let's start this show, folks. All right. Just so you know, I've gotten a couple IMs, a couple uh, Facebook messages on our pages, on our various pages. Why haven't I done a video show in a couple days? Well, folks, I've been in Bartlesville, Oklahoma, helping them move. So we have been moving, and let me tell you, forget about it. Anybody that says moving is fun, you got a few screws loose there, pal. It's a pain in the ass, but she's all set up now in, in Casa, or as Ian Murphy wants to call it, Chateau. Del Edwards in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Now, I'm not going to put her specific address out there, though I'm sure some of our viewers would love to see that, or hear it, I should say. Forget about it. We're not going to do that. We're going to start with your questions. And the first one is pretty funny. It comes from a husband and wife duo, and it reads as such. Bad Brad, love the email bag. My wife, Dino, or is that Dina? He said Dino, but I bet you Dina, he probably can't type. And I had a long time boxing fans from Michigan. I made a bet with her on our horse, which she wants to trade in for another, oh, horses, that Kevin Rooney, Mike Tyson's trainer at one time, fought Alexis Arguello and was beat. Am I right on this? Please tell me I am, because we love our horse, Mr. Pooney. Wow, he got a horse named Mr. Pooney. Tell me that isn't funny. Sign, Flip Tuffin, from Bloomfield, Michigan. Well, Flip, that's a pretty funny one. I never had a husband and wife duo, and I hate to see you lose a horse, but you better tell your wife, Dino, she's not going to be able to get rid of your horse, Mr. Pooney, because you're absolutely right, pal. Alexis Arguello did fight Kevin Rooney. I believe the year was 1983, and it was on regular TV. And Kevin Rooney got knocked, uh, as Chris Tucker said, you got knocked uh, out by Alexis Arguello. I think it was a second round knockout. And it was over. Alexis knocked him out. Uh, Rooney was out on the canvas, boy. Uh, he, was, he was hurt. Big punch. So you got it right. You get to keep Mr. Pooney. So, hey, feel free to write us again. All right, next question. Bad Brad, I cannot stand the BS with the Mayweather camp not announcing who he is fighting next. And it's bad enough that it appears to be Andre Burrow. Why do you think this crap is allowed by TMT? Signed. Raheem J, Las Vegas, Nevada. Raheem, it's the point that everybody's talking about. I'm going to tell you real simple. Why? You said it in your question. I'm going to answer your question with the point that you made in your question with that answer. Floyd Mayweather Jr. He can play these games. He's the king of boxing. Love him, hate him, whatever. He's the king of boxing. I can't stand it either, pal. I've said it before because I've gotten questions about this. I think it's ridiculous that... Uh, less than uh, 50 days, maybe closer to 40 days out. You don't know who he's going to fight. Most likely it'll be probably Andre Berto, but it's ridiculous. But there's something going on behind the scenes, business-wise. Maybe CBS wants to tie him in with a longer contract because it's the last fight with Showtime CBS. I don't know. But I'm sure there's something to do with his make-it-rain money, which I'm not saying he's hurting, but he's all about the Benjamins. Forget about it. Something to do with that. It's not that they don't know who the fighter is. And, <clears throat> excuse me, the fighter probably knows who he is as well. And if he doesn't, that's really messed up. But that's your answer. 
It's Floyd Mayweather Jr. He's able to do it. But we're not going to have to deal with him too much longer because he says he's going to quit after this fight, though I don't believe him. Forget about it. But he's still, he's still the power player in boxing. All things go through Floyd Mayweather Jr., unfortunately. But there's a lot of better fighters out there that are more exciting and more fan favorites. So there's your uh, answer to your question, Ryan. Last question is, Bad Brad, I used to love watching Yaki Lopez fight with his second match against Matthew Saad Muhammad being my favorite fight of all time. Hey, that's a, that's a great one. It's one of my favorites too. How many times did Yaki fight for the title? And did he ever finally win a championship? Signed, Rafael P. All the way from Argentina. Well, Rafael P., you picked a great one. That fight in 1980, I believe it was fight of the year, and it also had round of the year. And it was a 15-round match. I believe it was from the Playboy Mansion with Matthew Saad Muhammad. And had that fight gone on today, Yaki would have been the champion because he busted Matt up very badly. But boxing back in the day, they let it go on much longer than they do today. Now, in answer to your question, he fought five times. And he fought, follow me with this, he fought John Conti for the light heavyweight title in the 70s. He fought Victor Galendez twice for the light heavyweight title. He lost all three of those matches. Then in 1980, he fought again for the light heavyweight title, as we said, against Matthew Saad Muhammad. In that fight, he got knocked out. The other ones were decisions. And finally, he moved up to cruiserweight in, I believe it was 83-84. Uh, I'm not, I can't remember Zach here. He fought against Carlos de Leon for, the, for Carlos Cruiserweight title, and he got stopped in that fight. So he fought five times. And the Conti fight and the Glenda's matches, very questionable decisions that could have went his way. To me, Yaki is an on crown champion. He should have been a champion. But he was a warrior. He's actually an RSR supporter. If you look on the RSR homepage, he's wearing one of our t shirts, probably. I've interviewed him before in my book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime, and he's a great guy. He owns a gym called Fat City out in, I believe, in Sacramento, California. Check him out. He puts on amateur boxing matches, and he's a great guy. He's always been a supporter of mine, and he's one of the biggest sweethearts I've ever had the opportunity to interview uh, and meet in all my years of doing this, okay? Excuse me. So there's your answer to your question, and folks, that's another RSR video email bag in the can, as we always say. And as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently so long ago, the best is yet to come. I wish I could sing that line. Debbie's going like this with that. Don't even try it. And as we do, bad, bread, out.